All right, we're back. This is our last and final segment. Thanks for riding with us this morning. Um, we're going to talk uh, in our last uh, segment here about some of the issues that are prevalent with the um, way that the government is cracking down on the free speech and the rights of American citizens to understand what their capabilities and limitations are. And um, what they're doing is utilizing their power to threaten, coerce, and terrorize private security companies to shut off the flow of information. So let's let's recognize what we mean by that. Uh, there are a couple of companies out there that are um, that are are basically designed to keep privacy available to individuals. One of them uh, was the, was the company that uh, Edward Snowden used to pass information to Greenwald initially to get his attention to say, hey, here's some stuff you ought to have a hold of. I'm a, I'm a legitimate whistleblower. All of this stuff was encrypted. So meet me in Hong Kong and I'll give you the, the mother load, right? Well, what's happening here is the company that was doing that, it's called LavaBit, they have now shut off services and the reason they have is because they are they they were given two alternatives go out of business or give us a back door into your system and the problem is uh i'm going to i'm going to explain to you here with an article from uh with an article that was um on defense 1 and I, pub- I put this up on our Facebook page. Mike Jenke is an ex-SEAL. He works with a guy by the name of Phil Zimmerman. Now, Phil Zimmerman, for those of you who don't know him, he was the guy who, who, who wrote the encryption protocol for uh, PGP, pretty good privacy. And that was back in the late 90s. And, you know, Phil Zimmerman is considered a, a, a brilliant mind in the world of uh you know, of of encryption. And what it was originally designed for was corporate protection of, you know, information that and just if you wanted to send something to somebody and you didn't want anybody snooping in your in your underwear. That's nobody's business but yours, right? Well this company, this new company called Silent Circle, has formed itself and they offer a number of services. And this former Navy SEAL commando, Mike Janke, um, is one of the founders who, along with Phil Zimmerman, is the other founder of this program. And they offer a number of services, including encrypted private communications, cell phone to cell phone, a private security email system, and some other ways to communicate, including uh, a secured and encrypted text messaging and things like that. <coughs> the federal government actually uses his service, called Silent Circle, to hide sensitive information from the public. But they don't want anybody else to. Here's what Janke says. The FBI is a customer of ours. At the same time, they want legislation to put a back door into all kinds of technologies like Silent Circle for intercepting transmissions. So we're torn. Last Thursday the company cut off their Silent Circle email service, Silent Mail, they call it, to preempt any government attempt at email tapping. Now, LavaBit shut down the day earlier. And not only is LavaBit shut down, but he's under a gag order not to talk about why he's shut down. And folks, if that doesn't smell like Stasi police state tactics to you, 
I don't know what you're waiting for. The government comes in and strong arms a private company and says, you're under a gag order not to discuss why we are beating you. And you're and we're going to continue the beatings until you give. In this case, in Silent Mail, the the Jenke and, and Zimmerman de- made a decision. And they said to, to in order to preempt government forcing us to turn over this information, we're just going to shut off the service. Hey people, is that not censorship? Is it not? Is the government forcing censorship at the point of a gun? It most assuredly is. And if you don't recognize that for what it is, I want you to sit and dwell on that for a couple of minutes. Because when the answer comes to you, it's going to be like a light bulb going off in your mind. What they're doing is they are compelling these companies by hook or by crook, through coercion, you know, through... through uh, force to either reveal or go out of business. And it's the same thing they did to Verizon and AT&T and Google and everybody else. Now, you know, some of those partners may have been very, very willing. Google, as an example, obviously is very, very willing to sacrifice you. But some of these others aren't, including LavaBit. And the guy is actually barred legally with risk of jail if he does release the information as to why he's being shut off. Hey, you know what? When governments operate in secret, tyranny is swirling all about you. And that's what this is. The move came after the shutdown earlier in the day of another email provider, LavaBit, that Snowden relied on reportedly for secure correspondence. Silent Circle may lose some customers in the short term, but the popularity of anti-snooping software is only growing in the wake of the Snowden case. According to Forbes, monthly revenue for Silent Circle jumped more than 400% month over month after the media's revelations about the NSA internet surveillance. And Janky's firm will continue to offer its other popular services, which don't collect matted metadata about conversations and prohibit the company from deciphering content. Janky claims that 1% of its user base abuses the service to conceal illicit activity, but U.S. authorities won't put Silent Circle out of business because those tools alone cannot erase every digital footprint. So he said, basically his argument is they give themselves up in other ways. In other words, criminals and bad people aren't that smart, he says. They have Twitter accounts. They post on Facebook. They use credit cards that are stolen. Law enforcement and government today have so many other avenues electronically at their disposal to say, aha, we found the bad guy. Oh, they're using Silent Circle, so what? That we can see them communicating on Gmail already. In May, Silent Circle united with civil civil libertarians and cryptographers to protest the FBI proposal that would force all web services to plant bugs into real-time communications, like the eavesdropping features embedded in traditional telecommunications. Now listen to that statement for a moment. The FBI is proposing that all web services be implanted with bugs that will capture real-time communications as an eavesdropping. And this is Kalia too. Now you've heard me talk about Kalia because, you know, I came from the wireless business. Kalia is communications and, uh, uh, and law enforcement, uh, communications and law enforcement. Uh, access. And what that meant was when I was in the wireless business uh, in the the mid-90s when this occurred, Kalia, there was no way for cops to uh, tap into cell phone systems because they were wirelessly transmitted. And a call that was made from cell phone to cell phone never actually hit the public telephone network. In other words, if you made a phone call in in, um, New York and you made that phone call to another person in New York, The carrier would capture the call on a tower, route it down to one of their switches, route it over to a switch closest to the guy in New York and route it right back to him. So it never actually hit the public telephone system. They didn't have to use any of the system's backbone. And the government came along and said, we can't have that 
because there's no way for us to tap it unless it's in the public telephone system. One, it's prohibited by law. And two, we don't have access into your network because you're a private company. So they passed the Communications and Law Enforcement Act, which said government had access to all communications, telecommunications networks, wireless or otherwise, and that they were entitled to the same right to tap into communications networks, private ones like cell phone companies, that they had on you know, the local phone company. And they also implemented software that would allow them to do what's called a roving wiretap. So while you're moving from point A to point B and your phone switches from cell tower to cell tower to cell tower, they can still track you. It's at the switch level. So they don't really care what tower you're on. They can capture the information as it comes in and they can siphon it off there. There is a, uh, there is a, a, a memo out there that asks for Kalia 2. And that's what he's referring to here. And in May, they united with other civil libertarian and cryptographer groups to protest the FBI proposal that would force all web services to plant bugs into real-time communication systems. Like the eavesdropping features that are embedded in traditional telecommunications tele, uh, systems. So trust me, folks, when you're talking on your home telephone, Everything that you say is monitored, captured, and can be listened to in either real time or stored for later review. This doesn't mean Janky's not a champion of U.S. counterintelligence operations, especially those that disrupt terrorist plots. In the activist community, there are the fringe groups that say, why are you selling to the military? And Janky says, well, you don't understand. We're saving lives. Everybody wants us to join their cause. We try to say, look, we're for everybody. <clears throat> he says, I don't use Google. I don't let my daughter do iCloud or Instagram. I don't let her use a regular browser, he says, referring to Google, Apple, and Facebook web services that share certain user data with third parties. <clears throat> the Moore's Law of Data Collection means that, quote, in 10 years, they'll be able to get with with a single search, a medical company, your children's medical records going back to kindergarten, and that follows you into jobs and into your health care costs. Silent Circle terminated email services last week. And Obama met with industry leaders at the White House to address electronic monitoring issues. By the way, it was a private, secret conference. And the next day, he extended the olive branch even further, directing administrative officials and law lawmakers to rethink post-9-11 surveillance laws. But let, make, make no mistake about it, folks. This is a whitewash to make you feel as if they're honoring our request and, our, and the fact that America is up in arms, not to mention the whole world, is up in arms about this NSA spying. And our NSA spying isn't relegated only to the United States of America. The Germans are having kittens over it. The British people were flipping out until they found out that Britain's NSA, the GCHQ, was actually paid by the NSA 150 million pounds to spy on their people on our behalf and our people on our behalf so that that way the NSA could say, plausible deniability, we didn't spy on Americans. Then by, law, by the lie of omission, the British government spied on Americans and then gave them the information they wanted. But they could legally say, we didn't spy on Americans. See, that's where the problem of verbicide comes in and lies come in. They're lying to you by omission. What they're not saying is 10 times more valuable than what they are saying. And everybody knows it. They just don't know what's not being said. When we have a government that operates this far outside the bounds of ethics, morality, jurisprudence, integrity, honor, and truth, we have a government that no longer represents us. You, I, and everyone that you know, both here, abroad, and afar, are all living at this point under a de facto police state. And mark my words, this isn't limited just to here or there. Some states and some nations are further along. But here in the United States, they have the technological capacity to do things that you can't even dream of. 
Moreover, they have a unharvested feast awaiting them in Americans' information. Why? Because we're the most technologically advanced nation in the world, and everybody's got a cell phone, and everybody's got internet, and everybody's dumping all this information out there. Facebook was started here. It's created here. Not to, not to say other governments and nations don't have it, but let's be candid. There's a lot more Americans using Facebook than non-Americans. And what the United States of Americans government is doing right now is they are utilizing the Internet as a harvesting tool to capture and build dossiers on every American citizen. And the reason that that is so dangerous is because no matter how long and how hard you think about it, you will not come up with one plausible, valuable reason how that will benefit you as an individual. Sure, it benefits government. It benefits in them in their quest to reign in terror. The problem is that they consider you to be the source of terror. That's a bold statement, but it's the truth. They consider you to be the source of terror. They're not worried about some extremist in, in, in Islam. I mean, they're peripheral, peripherally they are because they need that as a plausible excuse to beat the snot out of you. But mark my words, they're using that as the excuse to carry around the gun that they're shooting you with. Don't you get it? You have an infinitesimal opportunity and risk of being killed by a terrorist attack in the United States of America. More children drown in pools than Americans die from terrorism. Your risk is so infinitesimal, so small, so minute, so minuscule, that there is almost virtually no chance that you will be affected by terrorism in your life at least the kind of terrorism they've got you worried about. What you don't understand is that while you're avoiding and fearing that terrorism from afar, the terrorist lives in your kitchen, in your phone, on your telecommunications system, on your internet, on your computer, in your bedroom, in your vehicle, everywhere, everything, every place. Publicly, you're being monitored and visibly watched and tracked by camera systems. They just came out with a story that New York City police departments are going to get something like the Google Glass, where they would have access to draw off the video feeds from public cameras in the vicinity of where they are. You've got to be flipping kidding me. They're talking about putting cameras on every police officer in New York City in their cap or something, so that everything they do will be filmed. And everything that you do will be filmed by them. Now, even the cops are pushing back on this, primarily for the reason that I think they don't want to be captured, you know, doing something that would be constru construed as unethical or illegal or violative of civil rights. But at the same point in time, you know, while they're protecting their own interest, they're actually inadvertently protecting ours. You see, where we stand right now and where we're going to is so dangerous to liberty and freedom. It is so consequential to everything that the United States of America was built upon and founded upon. Everything that you, all the principles that you thought applied to you are defunct. They're gone. They no longer exist. Every idea that you ever had about truth, justice, fairness, equitability, equality, government's protective shield over you has evaporated like smoke in a wind. We have awakened to find out that the government that we felt was shielding us and protecting us with an umbrella of protection has in fact become our prison. And the proof 
is everywhere around you. You're being monitored and dossiers are being built upon you. For what nebulous purpose? What insidiously evil result will come from that? I challenge everyone out there, everyone who watches this, everyone who hears this, I'm challenging you to find one plausible value that you will obtain personally from having a dossier that incorporates every aspect of your life into a government database with your name at the top of the file tab. I ask you that. <clears throat> if you can find one, email me at mike at americasvoicenow.org. If you can find one valuable aspect that will come from that, send me an email. I'll invite you on the show. I'll interview you. I'll bring you on. We can have an open discussion about it. But I can tell you right now that that challenge will go unmet. Because I've thought long and hard about it. And I'm while I'm not saying I'm the deepest thinker on the planet, I can tell you that I know that there's no value that you can derive from that as an individual. For a database to contain everything about your history, you know, I did a, a show, an article last week about the, the, the pocket litter thing that the NSA is now grabbing. You know what pocket litter is? Pocket litter is every receipt for every credit card transaction or ATM card that you swipe. When you go in and you buy something and you, you know, like, oh, I don't have enough cash and you just swipe a credit card or an ATM card, you know, for that $12 item. And you, because we, we live in the, what, cashless society, that, that transaction is, is collected, reported, and stored. What did you buy? What date? What time? Where were you? Where were you 20 minutes before that where your license plate was scanned by a law enforcement vehicle that has a license plate scanning device on the dashboard? You see, everything that you do is being tracked, monitored, and stored. Everything. And it's not just those things that you do on the internet or on your telephone. Your public visage being captured on camera systems around the city you live in, around the highways that you drive on, your license plate, which is being captured and monitored by law enforcement agencies around the nation and stored in massive databases, the traffic lights that you go underneath when you're driving are capturing plate information and sending it back to federal fusion centers around the country for storage and later dissemination. Why? Because when they have all of this pocket litter information, your parking ticket, not a ticket from law enforcement, the receipt, <laughs> you pull into a parking slot at work, you go to a city, you park in a parking garage or in a parking lot, and you get a ticket for that. You go to an airport and you park your vehicle there. And at the end of the day that, that you pull that little ticket out that gets stamped, it's all being tracked and monitored. Every purchase you make, every internet purchase you make, purchases you make with cash. Oh, I'm safe on that. No, you're not. Because the store has a surveillance camera system that captured you, monitored you. And now that information is being added to the database as well. That's too much. You're going just too far, you say. No, I'm not. And there's ample proof out there. You're just not listening to what's being told to you. You're not paying attention because you don't want to recognize and therefore have to react to the truth. You can be willfully ignorant, but like Ayn Rand said in one of her best quotes, you can avoid, uh, let's see, I just lost it now. You can avoid the truth, but you can't avoid the consequences of the truth. In other words, just because you pretend it's not happening doesn't make it not happen. If you stand on the railroad track and the train is coming, and you know the train is coming, but you pretend to ignore it, at some point in time, you are going to be all over the front of that train. It's that simple. Just because you don't want to acknowledge that it's happening doesn't mean that it's not. You're listening to America's Voice now. Please join us every day from 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. Central Time. You can find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org. 
You can find us at facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. And then you can find this and every other program that we do on YouTube, where I encourage you to share them with your friends and those within your influence at, Amer- at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. Thanks so much for listening and being with us today. Uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to talk about Wi-Fi mesh networks.